So it's not just like a, a bad cheerleader or an inverse cheerleader who instead of cheering you on and going, go on, mate, you're doing really well, is like, oh, you suck, I hope you fail. There is that, which sucks, and it's, it's hard to deal with, but they actually have an intention for you. And if you analyze the intention of the interject and you say, what's, what's the interject guiding me towards? What is this narcissistic interject? Because I've now interjected my narcissist. I've now interjected the MPD. What are they leading me towards? Oh my God, they're leading me towards self-destruction. They're leading me towards isolation. They're leading me towards my former patterns of, of uh, negative coping strategies, you know, being addicted to, to porn, to gambling, to drugs, to like um, uh, immediate material gratification, so on and so forth. It's, a, it's like a shadow activation that's going on. That represents to me an intention, and that intention is potentially very, very destructive. It's beyond just a mere negative voice. It's, it's something far nastier than that. So when I'm saying you've mirrored the narcissist, yes, narcissistic behavior, fine. It's, it's not a big deal because you don't have MPD. You do have empathy. You, you want to be a good person. You're here trying to heal. You're willing to go to therapy. You're prepared to tell un unpleasant and uncomfortable truths to a therapist so on and so you're prepared to admit where you've done wrong. You don't have MPD, but there's an MPD substructure that you've mirrored unconsciously. The narcissist doesn't know that this is happening. It just happens to play out this way. If you want to have a conversation about that, we can do it. But this course is, is really about the practical solutions for getting out of that. Because when you start to get into, well, how, how does the narcissist do this? Do they know? Do they not know? It's, it's, a, it's a difficult conversation. Not that this is an easy one. So we have to understand the narcissist's substructure of their personality coordinates that we've mirrored. The first one that's very important. The narcissist is trapped between two pillars. The two pillars are interject. And this is where the cognitive dissonance and the stress comes from. So narcissists are stressed. The baseline state of the narcissist, I claim, is narcissistic stress. This is different to, but related to, narcissistic elation and narcissistic depletion. When the narcissist gets plenty of supply, admiration and adulation, they go into elation and the stress, which is adjacent, is diminished. When the narcissist loses supply or their supply is challenged or they experience a narcissistic injury, they go into narcissistic depletion and they can become depressed. But they're in a permanent state because of cognitive dissonance of narcissistic stress. And I claim that this can lead to narcissistic exhaustion. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you enjoyed that video. These are concepts from my latest course, Narcissistic Matrix Reintegration. This is a course that operates from the assumption that the major barrier to recovery from narcissistic abuse is the mirroring that takes place between us as the target and the narcissist, and that the major pain that we experience is a fracturing of the self that needs reintegration. If you're interested in those concepts and in getting that course, you can get it from this link here. Thank you very much for your time and for your attention. I look forward to speaking to you very soon. Thank you.